All righty, let's formalize our approach to uh, mesh analysis. When analyzing a circuit using mesh analysis, we first of all identify the meshes. Once again, a mesh is a closed loop that contains no other loops within it. We'll next assign variable names for each of the mesh currents. We'll then write KVL equations around each mesh in terms of the mesh currents. And then at that point, we have a system of equations in terms of our mesh, mesh currents that simply need to be solved, and we've got the problem so, and we've got the problem taken care of. Let's take a look at this circuit here. First of all, identify the meshes. We've got a mesh here on the left. We've got this upper mesh, a lower mesh, and again, this outer loop is not a mesh because in this case, it contains three different meshes within it. So we identify then, or we define, three different mesh currents, one for each of the meshes. We'll define the current in this mesh to be I1 and referenced in that direction. The mesh in the, or the mesh current in this mesh we'll call I2 and the mesh current in this mesh we'll call I3. Let's go ahead now then and write the three mesh equations in terms of I1 and I2 and I3 starting right here. Going up this way we cross the voltage source going from minus to plus, therefore it's a voltage increase, and again that will be a negative V0. Plus the voltage drop across R1 is just R1 times I1. Now coming down across R2, we need to be careful. The current through R2, the current through R2 involves two different mesh currents. Because we're going down at this point, the current through here is going to be the mesh current referenced down, which is I1, minus I2, which is referenced in the opposite direction. So we'll have then plus R2 times I1 minus I2. Now continuing on down across R5, the current flowing through R5 is going to be I1 minus I3. And those terms must then add to zero. Let's take a look at the top mesh. Starting right here and going up, we've got R2 times the current flowing up, which is I2 minus I1. And again, let us just point out that the current going up, I2 minus I1, in this equation, is the opposite current that was flowing down, which was I1 minus I2, in this equation. All right, continuing on around, we have then plus R3 times the current through R3 is simply I2. Coming back to the left through R4, we'll have plus R4 times the current flowing in R4, which is I2 minus I3. That brings us back to where we started, so the sum of those terms must equal zero. And finally, we do a KVL around this bottom mesh, starting here, and we'll have R5 times the current flowing through R5 in the direction we're going, which is I3 minus I1. plus, coming across here, plus R4 times the current flowing left to right in R4 in terms of the mesh currents is I3 minus I2. And then finally the current coming down here through that R6 will be R6 times I3. And the sum of those currents equals zero. Uh, up here, let's just go ahead and complete this by factoring out the, the mesh currents and combining like terms. We have for the top one, the top equation, we've got I1 times R1. Let's see, we've got I1 there, there, and there. So it'll be R1 plus R2 plus R5. Plus I2 times, we have 1 
I2 term there, it's got a negative R2 plus I3. We've got one I3 term here with a negative sign in front of it, so that would be I plus I3 times a negative R5. And the sum of those then equals, we've got the negative V0 that we need to bring over to the other side as a positive V0. Combining like terms in the second equation, we factor out the I2, I'm sorry, the I1 here. And I've got one I1 term. It's got a negative on it, so it'll be a negative R2 plus I2 times got I2 here, here, and here, all positives will be R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R3 plus R4 and then our I3 terms there is only one it's got a negative so it'll be a negative R4 and the sum of those terms have to equal zero and finally the bottom equation here, factoring out the I1s to begin with. I've got an I1 term here times, uh, what is that? That's R5, isn't it? So I1 has got a negative R5 plus I2. Once again, there's only one I2 term and it has a negative R4 plus I3 and there are three I3 terms. I've got uh, R4 plus R5 plus R6. R4 plus R5 plus R6. And the sum of those has to equal zero. Plug it in, to, well, of course, with the values of the resistors and the V0, plug it in to your, to your matrix solver or your solve button on your calculator and you've got everything you need to calculate those the mesh currents. Once you know the mesh currents, you can calculate any branch voltage or branch current that you might be interested in.